Yeah, promotional main everything. We saw from the first game of pre-season that we can win this league. This is it, FA Cup action, second round, Gateshead versus Charlton Athletic. Fantastic reaction save! Oh, another one! We're really back now as a football club. We're not gonna go away anyway. two goals in the game and it's gone the last minute. My confidence was so high. I was I was buzzing. When you were growing up, what was sort of your career plan if you had one in your head at all? Um career plan I wouldn't say I had a, a structured career plan. I just wanted to be a professional footballer. Against Chadwick now, running down the line into the box. Watson, header cleared off the line. Surely. Yeah. <laughs> Put by Watson. Possibly the easiest goal ever scored at Crossbar. My dad came down to, to pick me up when I was playing football. I remember that. I haven't got many memories as a kid, but I remember that. I was playing football and noticed that he was smiling watching me play football. And obviously when you're younger, you just want to impress your parents and make your parents sort of proud of you so from there really I was just obsessed um, with football um, and I've always been obsessed with it. My first job was working in Asda bringing stuff from the warehouse to the shop floor so that people could stack the shelves and then I went to work in a call centre and um, again coaching alongside that and then from the call centre I went to work for like a finance company um, in Newcastle. I kind of stopped all the football coaching but I was still playing semi-professional. When I was in that office it was a, a realisation that I was miles away from where I wanted to be when I was sort of younger and what I wanted to do. So me and Belly worked in the office at the, the same time and we both kind of made a decision that we were going to go back to education but I just knew that I, I wanted a different career path so went back to, to uni to, to pursue getting into full-time football. You're going to punch your one-two in so Panny plays a one-two. Get it back, get it back. Yeah, then Maka plays it. You go back to your queue, Penny. Stay there, Maka, yeah, and then you'll stay there, okay? So you always go back to your queue. Once you play, you'll have to stay in to get the next one, too. So I set my own business up as soon as I finished uni and I was playing for Darling at the time. So I just asked Martin Gray if I could do a, a session with the boys. Done a session, he was really impressed with it. So he was friends with Malcolm Crosby at the time. So he rang Malcolm while we were doing the session and he said, we've got a player here who's doing some really good stuff. Do you want to send him into Gateshead and he can help the boys out and see if you like him? Malcolm was unbelievable with me. Um, like unbelievable. And then from there, Malcolm just said, yeah, just keep coming in. And then I've been really lucky that the managers that have followed on from Malcolm have have liked what I do and liked me as a person and that's allowed us to, to continue working for the football club and then where I am now. Exactly what's been happening. Um, we'll, we'll run it from the top. Uh, we found out that Steve Watson um, had uh, tendered his resignation and was going to take up the position at York City. Nick McLean has put, um, best of luck to Steve and Mickey. I think the club uh, should leave Clarkey in charge until the end of the season. Uh, don't think more upheaval is required, but realistically, who would you want for the job? I'm not even looking. When far Steve ahead. left and, and Mickey took over, Ben just, I think he just wanted a, a friend really to, to be there to support him because he knew that he was going to do it because he wanted to help the club. So although it was coming in as assistant manager, I just seen it as, as coming in to try and help Ben as much as I possibly could, knowing how much the club meant to him. So I wasn't coming in, giving any tactical information out or anything like that, or anything even close to that. I was just coming in to try and help each and every player individually and just be as supportive to, to Ben as I, as I possibly could be. And I was just really grateful of, of the opportunity that he asked me, although it was probably just because I was a, I'm was a close friend of Ben and he, he wanted that, but he still, he, he could have had his pick. I know there was a lot of people um, 
wanting to, to help him at the time. I know his phone kind of blew up the day that he got the job, but he asked me to help him and I'll, I'll for, be forever grateful for that because that was a, a massive opportunity that Ben's gave me there. And he probably doesn't know it himself how big the opportunity was that he gave me, but it was everything. It, it's the full reason why, why I'm here today. How will Ben Clark start his tenure as Gator manager alongside Ian Watt and his assistants? They just sat down I think when bench. you finish your career or you finish playing, you always have certain games that you remember. And that was a game that I'll, I'll remember forever. I remember driving to the bus to to get on the bus to come to, uh, to go to Salford and I was getting really emotional and I couldn't tell you why I was getting emotional or I, I don't know the reasons and I just remember every single part about it. I remember getting on the bus, I remember talking in front of the lads which is something that I'd never ever done before. I was a strength and conditioning coach so the lads were well, well within the rights really to say like well you don't, we've, you've never played this level before so why are you trying to give us information um, but they didn't, they were absolutely brilliant with us. I remember how the game went obviously Percy giving the penalty away. Matt Green to run on to and the keeper, oh and he's brought down Matt Green and it's a penalty. And then the Scotty Borden the getting the, 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 the goal as well. And it was a fantastic cross. Robbie it was an unbelievable day and on the bus on the way back was just just really really good and the supporters how much they, they sort of appreciated what Ben was doing. Having Mike on board as well, it was the, the, the start of that journey of, of getting to know Mike and, and getting close with him. So it's a game that I'll, I'll remember every single bit of it from start to finish, probably for the rest of my life. Now, I think training starts now, okay. I think we need to move the ball a little bit quicker, all right, because that's what we're going to have to do on Friday, so it's important that we get a good day. But for me, it's just your mentality, all right. Generally, I think we're a better side than them. Having watched them, I think we're a better side than them, okay. And as I say, if you're on the outside looking in, you might think, oh, you know, I was just talking to you. But generally, because I know the group, all right, we've been together now for a long time, okay. I know the mentality of the group, I know these individuals, I know these players. I want to believe that we're a better side than Charlton. It's not an occasion where we go and we just turn up and we enjoy it, we go there and we win the game as we got to see. Alright? No. no. With Angelos for the warm-up boys. Today, uh, he comes through today, all right. So we'll we'll um, see if there's any reaction. Um, we'll gauge that, and um, like I say, there's competition for places in every department at the minute. So we'll we'll gauge that, and we'll, we'll see how it, how it goes. Yeah, I think I've always had, felt like I've had a bit of a point to prove ever since I, I signed full time. Shot off, Lizzie, for Confidence just grows naturally, and then you start having the belief that you know you can do it week in, week out. I think that was massive for me. So my mindset changed. I was like, I knew I, I could score goals at this level. I'd done it previously, um, but I had a couple of years where I didn't quite do it. So when I started playing games and scoring goals, I was performing well as well as scoring goals. Um, my confidence just grew. Well, I've known Macca since he was 18, I think he might have been 17, 18, when he first came into the club. I played a trial, trial game here, got invited down, and we played Kilmarnock and it wasn't my best game, wasn't my worst game, but I came away from that game thinking I probably hadn't done enough to, to earn a contract. And then I got told, got a phone call two weeks later from, from Neil Aspen, who was the manager at the time, who said he, he seen something in me. So I'm, I'm grateful for him for giving that chance to this day. There's never ever been any doubt over his ability, but I think the big thing for, for Macaulay's is mindset. Previously, if Maka would lose the ball, if he'd miss a chance, it was like the weight of the world was on his shoulders. There isn't a rewind button in football. You can't go back and have the chance again. So it's literally pointless thinking about it. Um, but ultimately, he's done everything himself. He's, his, work rate is, his work rate is brilliant. It's always been brilliant. Obviously, I was out of contract in the summer and I haven't played as much as I, I hoped again. Um, and I, I just used that, that period to be the fittest I can be, be the strongest I can be, the sharpest I can be, and, and really take things in tactically just to improve as a player. I sort of 
gained confidence and the confidence kept on growing and I took that into, into pre-season and now into this season. And I think that period was, was vital for me. I think that, that period, I'm not sure whether I, I, I'd be in as good a form as I'm, I'm in now. Do you think that Langstaff will play on Friday? He's in with a chance. He's in with a chance. I don't know if he'll start. Um, if he does, it'd be great to get 60 minutes out of him if, if he's fit enough to do that. But um, we'll just have to see. I think it was on a Friday before the spending mode game. I just landed awkwardly, um, sort of planted in, in Germany. And as the day went on, it just got a lot worse. And I think the next couple of days, I just couldn't straight on my knee, couldn't walk. And I, I really felt like I'd done something quite serious. You know, I got booked in for a scan. Went went to the scan and the scan revealed that no no like sort of significant damage and it was a case of saying how quick I could heal. I went from a point where I, I couldn't walk, so it was I was looking at the Charlton game especially, you know, live on, on ITV and the sort of magnitude of the game. I was looking at that game as, as the game I was able to get back for. I just wanted to get at least one session in before that game, even if it was as a substitute in that game. I wanted, I wanted to be involved. We'll have anyone. case of lights camera action because this game is under the lights and the cameras are here for ITV4. The cameras are all around the pitch, the atmosphere you cut up with a knife, all the big boys are here covering the game but then we don't mind that because it makes it up a lot of money. I was confident in us performing well. I thought there might have been a few people thinking that we changed the way we played and maybe it's been a little bit, bit more direct and not wanting to take risks playing out from the back. There's probably a few more nerves than, than, than normal, you know, I get a little bit nervous on, with every game, you know, every, every game in the league, but obviously that one being on ITV it was probably a few more nerves. To have McCauley on staff back in the start main is a massive plus, but how many minutes will he see out this evening? It's the perfect evening for football. The time we are stand here is absolutely rammed packed. It's a set out. It sounds electric out there. The big thing for me on that night was to give the boys belief in, in what they're doing and the way they're playing and belief in that if you keep doing it, don't come away from anything else, um, then, then we will perform well. <laughs> Lovely touch, lays it off to Kedwin Scott. Can he get a shot off? He can. Oh, oh side netting. 
lovely touch from Kevin Scott, puts the ball through for Macaulay Langstaff, can he get in front? Apparently can, he needs to cross this ball across, he can, there's no, it's fell to Campbell, Campbell can he shoot? Shoot! Oh, agonisingly over the bar! And now the ball's over the top and surely he's offside there, Washington, and he's going to get down there, cross it over, and that's in, I think it might have come off Mike Williamson there. I think it's an own goal, Stockley's celebrating, but that looked a very dubious offside there. We had a belief that if, if we did turn up and we were at our best, that we can beat anyone on that day. The pressure was on them, so we, we, we just sort of embraced that, and I think we went in the game with, with full belief that we could win the game. We didn't come away from who we are and what we are. We kept with our, our fingerprint. Um, and we performed really well on the night. We were there for a reason. We, we were there because we'd worked so hard and we're playing night EV against Charlton in the FA Cup. It doesn't come along very often. We had to embrace that. Campbell on the far side. Campbell, can he finish this one? Goes for the shot. Great save. Comes back to Campbell. Second one. Oh, oh. past the balls. It sat up for him lovely as well. Find the man. It's Dolly who leaves it. Shot. It goes. Oh, save. Oh. Oh. We were just talking. When we were off air, if the ball had a fell to Langstaff, he finds the Emirates FA Cup advertising board and not the back of the net. Now comes the cross. Comes in, nodded across, dangerous, and that was put into the back of the net. I think it was Mike Williamson that nodded the ball in towards his direction. There's appeals for offside there, but Williamson nodded that on. It's an insistent there's an offside there. <laughs> Williams, Williams puts it through. Can Langstaff get onto this ball? He's one on one with the keeper. Can he finish it? Oh, puts it over the on. bar. Puts it over the bar. Oh, what a golden chance. I missed a couple of chances in the game, which I look back at, I probably should have done better, probably should have scored. Um, still this day, it bugs me a little bit that I couldn't score, score one of them chances and, and give us a chance of, of going through the next round. Holly puts us in towards the back post and... Oh, oh it's hit! Oh, fantastic reaction save! Oh, another one! Gaten, how didn't they get it across the line? It's still a scramble, has been cleared. It's a game of like centimetres, inches. If ESC hits the ball in a different part of his foot, it goes in with 1-0 up. If McCauley does something slightly different, moves a second early, a second later, then um, obviously he missed a couple of chances. But I really feel that we're, we put a really good performance in. And that just happens in football sometimes. The, the result doesn't tie up with the, the performance. Gateshead can hold their heads up high here at Gateshead International Stadium. People have seen what this club's about. Yeah. They've seen what this team's about. They've seen what this managerial team's about. And they'll want to get, hopefully, get involved in that. They've been fantastic tonight, they really have. Well, thank you very much, Mark, for joining us. It's always a pleasure. You can join us. I recorded the game, I watched it back the day after. I um, was probably a little bit more annoyed after watching it back than I was after the game. Like I said, to this day, it still annoys me a little bit that I couldn't give us a lead or equalise in the game. Um, but yeah, I probably won't watch it back again. I was proud of the boys massively. I was proud of the the club and the community and how many numbers turned up. I just really wanted um, everyone on the night to believe and that doesn't just mean the coaching staff and the players, it meant everyone like yourself, everyone who works at the club, the supporters. I just wanted to create something where yeah, they, they really believe in, in everything what everyone's doing at the football club and I felt that that we got that. You can see how much it, it meant the fans on the day, they, they turned up in the numbers and Obviously, there have been plenty of people watching on TV, so it, it, it was a positive day for the club. Because we went to the playoffs and there wasn't any fans there, I felt that the Charlton game was probably the first time where I felt like, yeah, we're, we're really back now as a football club. We're, we're back to where the, the James Curtises and the, the Philly Turnbulls and Osters and Clarkies got the club to where it was previously. Um, that was the first time I felt, yeah, we've we've done them a service now, we've got the club back to where to where they took it to. And I felt that maybe it's after after Wembley. I thought the community was really together at Wembley when um got beat off Cambridge. And then maybe it's after that probably didn't hit the numbers supporters wise, which we felt that we would. Um, and then I feel that now we're we're building it back up and the relationship between the club and the community is is just getting better and ultimately that was one of our main goals coming in here.
can't play on this, can't play on that. Fazi is a really tough place to go. The pitch was, was horrendous on the day. Um, it was it was raining quite heavily and lads couldn't really stand up on the pitch. It was it was a really tough condition to play in. We just switched on the whole time. What a f battle this is going to be. Yeah. Enjoy it. Back in your two groups when Greggy's ready. Come on, fellas. Come on. Come, come on, 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 come on. Let's go now, eh? I think we were 3-1 down with around 10 minutes ago. But I feel like, obviously we played it earlier in the season against Southport and that was sort of the same. We were 3-1 down with, with around 15 minutes ago. We're massive on reaction, not letting what's happened affect you and just reacting to it. That's all you can do. You can't replay the game, you can't retake chances. Mike and Buster drum in it was every single day that you've got to react to, to whatever is put in front of you. That sort of adversity that you've got to react to and you know, it might not be our day, we could be three and all down with five minutes left, but as long as we keep on doing the right things, stick to our process, the result will come. Um, but so we have to keep on believing when we go into the last couple of minutes of games, we're going to get a goal, we need to keep on going right into the last minute, you know, until the whistle blows, the game's never over. I can remember looking at Greg and saying to him, we can, we can score three here, and, and Greg was saying the same thing. Going into the, the last sort of 15, 20 minutes of the game, if, if we are if we are down one or two goals, then we know we've got a forward that can, can pull us out of it. A lot of what we do is for them. We turn up in the numbers week in, week out, at home, the sink for the full for 90 minutes. They follow the team away from home as well. And they've been brilliant, you know. It's, it, I've always said it's it's more than a football club here at Gateshead. It's it's a community, and I think you know obviously they've had a tough few years in terms of off the pitch. I think to the point where they almost never had a football club to support. I hope they they take a lot of satisfaction from the fact that we're getting the club back to to where it belongs. I can't believe I'm getting it. He can't go in the sea. He's going to go in the sea. Ice cube will float away in the sea. I was leaving there, she was facing this way. I was behind Jane, you still mentioned it. Why do I need to be there? No, I'm not. Last one, then, this is the last one. Last one.
When I first took this job, I had a few people sort of ring me and give me advice. And a lot of what people were seeing was, don't get close to players, distance yourself. But it's impossible. It, it's not in my nature. Um, I feel that that's my strength as a coach, is getting close to the boys, um, getting to know them. I know what he's like, I know, I know what his character's like, I know him very well and I really got along with him. I think he's just asked any lad in football that knows Busted to speak so highly of him. Some people might say that I do, some people might say I am too close to the boys, but I'll never change the, that way because that's one of the main reasons I come in. I enjoy interacting with the lads every day. All that's just the biggest part of the game for me. Um, so yeah, definitely don't get close to your players. For me personally, was the worst bit of advice I received. For other people, it might be right. They maybe shouldn't get close to players, but for me, I have to be close. When Mike and myself took over, the first two things what we wanted to do was create a club what players wanted to play for, so create an environment what players really wanted to, to come and play for and if a player left here then they'd say really good things about how we are as people which is the first thing um, and then obviously with that we felt that we'd be able to, to really build the community together again. It's been a good journey so far and hopefully it'll continue. Goes for a curling shot. Yeah! Oh! Oh! Ollie, no. Oh, lovely work. Can he finish it? He can! Oh! He's got a one on one. Macaulay Langstaff makes it 1 0. Langstaff steps up, blasts it into the net. It's a retake the lead. Good evening and welcome to the Heat Army podcast. There's a lot at stake here tonight as Gator could go top of the league if they win. Will Mike Williamson's men see it out and take that top spot? Mark, such a pivotal game for both sides tonight. It is and it feels positive when you walk in here. Gator will have to beat the professional best tonight. On the edge of the box, handball appeals. Kevin Scott, yeah! lovely equaliser. Ball through to Tinker. First touch, straight oh, ball. Is. What a finish! What a that is the ball that uh, Paul Black had been waiting for. Pink paints. Oh, oh lovely stuff. Can Black had finish this one? Oh, he's got two players around him. He does. What a finish! Oh, he had to dance for three players to put that to the back of the net. Ball forward for Langstaff. He can't get around street. He can't finish it. Lovely finish. finish. The touch was beautiful. He rounded the defender when he got the ball and makes it 4-1. And the time of near stand is on its feet. And that is the full-time whistle. Gateshead go top of the league. Job done. Simple as that. And it's on to the next one now. That's what Gates have got to do. Just take off games. They've got to just keep winning, keep that momentum going. I keep using that word, but you need to win titles and get promoted. You don't need anyone to tell Mike Williamson that or Ian Watson or Louis Story. I think I'd be lying if I said I, I didn't sit here and, and check the league table quite regularly. But yeah, at that point of the season when we went top, we got, we got our rewards for the performance we put in. Um, but there was still a long way to go. We knew that and there's, there still is a long way to go. The supporters, it's their club. So if they want to enjoy being top of the league and put it on their social media or retweet or whatever it is that they want to do, that's totally fine. It's their club. So they should get as much enjoyment out of it as they possibly can. We haven't just fell in this position, we're here for a reason. We haven't just got lucky and ended up here. We're here because of the hard work and the performances we've put in. And like I said, the pressure that comes with that and everyone sort of wanting to beat us now, we've just got to use that as a positive and embrace it and and take that into the final stretch of the season. Going to be a massive, sorry, this is going to be a massive game against Kiddy. Well, it's... 
No, no joke. And I mean, we normally at this stage ask for predictions. I mean, I'll ask for them, but I, I just if, hook up by crook as long as we get three points. I don't care if it's if it's nine ten uh, ten nine or three one or one nil. As long as the three points come home to Gator, that is all I care about. And we get through the injuries. That's my prediction two one. I'm going to go for one nil. Um, Langstaff's going to score in the last last minute of the game. Oh, I, I think we'll start. I think I think we'll start quick. I think it may be two two one two one. We said we've got one here from Gordon. He's put two one. Sure that the sessions boys we don't come away from what we are. All right, what we've been for the last three years. We said that's body language. All right, when you play ninety minutes, you play zero minutes on Saturday. Your body language in training has to be bang on. That gets the best out of the team. Know that if the team does well, then I do well. The PLU do well, whatever it is. So just make sure that you're encouraging people, judging them on the intention a lot of the time, and not so much the action. All right. We've got a massive, massive game on uh, Saturday. Everyone outside the uh, outside the club didn't think we we would have enough to beat Kidderminster on the day because they're such a good side. Would we have enough to to get a result? I was speaking to Macaulay today, and he mentioned that his his mum was worried about us playing Kidderminster because she'd seen him play West Ham on the telly. Yeah, I think for for about three weeks before for that game, my mum was saying um, you're playing Kidderminster soon. It's, it's going to be a tough game. We just almost beat West Ham on Premier League side. I was saying. My mum, we're, we're a good team as well, you know, it's obviously not just my parents were saying that, it was a lot of people outside the club were saying, oh, Kidderminster, Kidderminster, and rightly so, they had a, a really good run in the FA Cup and they were sort of feed for a reason because they were putting in really good performances, but we know how good we are on our day and we know that if we, if we turn up and play our, our best, then it's a tough day's work for anyone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hate that in Come on, come on. I think there was a real belief from Kidderminster that they were going to beat us on the day and I think we felt that and we didn't want to let that affect us at all, we really want to show everyone that we're going to go right till the end here, and we're not we're not going to go away anywhere. And we're going to give every single game everything that we possibly have. We know how tough it was going to be. We played them earlier in the season, and I've said before, I think apart from us, I felt they're the best side in the league. So we knew them coming here was going to be a tough game, but it's the same for them. They knew coming here was it was going to be a really tough game. <laughs>
Leicester game was a massive point in our season. I think that was a massive game. You know, I think the fact that we we won that game quite convincingly. Um, I think we came away from that game sort of it felt bigger than than, than most games. But like I say, every game's massive now going to the last couple of months of the season. I think every win, whether you're playing second, third in the league or bottom of the league, it's it's just as big as, as each other. I just know how big promotion would be for the club and it would mean the the late nights watching opposition, watching games, going through different things. Um when I maybe should be doing other things with family and friends and things like that, them sacrifices that you make. But I come in every day and I get to, to work with my my best mates, really my closest mates. So that in itself is is success for me in terms of I'm working every day as hard as I possibly can with people who I love and care about. And I mean, even now talking about this, I feel a little bit uncomfortable because we're not there yet um, and we're nowhere near there. So we really have to, to keep working hard and push hard. And whether we get promoted now, whether we get promoted in two years, whether we don't get promoted, Ultimately, I'd still be just as proud of, of what we've achieved because when we came in, there wasn't a football club. I was ringing players to sign for us and they, they wouldn't come because they were asking who we had already at the club, who they were going to come and play with. And I was telling them we didn't have any players. So to go from that to where we are now um, is something that I'm proud of, you should be proud of, everyone at the club should be proud of. And as long as we continue to to um, help each other and work as hard as we possibly can, then that, that that's the achievement for me. Yeah, promotion will mean everything. I think I see, I spotted at the start of the season about the club that got promoted last season and, and seeing the celebrations. Uh, one of my good friends got promoted last season with a club and I seen the celebrations. I was like, I want that next year. I, I say it this day, I think that point at, at Billingham Symphony, when I think we're normally division two and we got promoted and I think the, the feeling was unbelievable and now obviously that's at a low level but I think if I can sort of replicate that this year with this club uh, and not just with this club but obviously with a group of lads we've got I think it's the best dressing room I've been involved in by far so I think to to do that this year with that group of lads would mean, would mean anything. That was tremendous, that. Did I need to wait longer? Was I supposed to wait longer?